you, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. You've got to enjoy exercise to be consistent at it and you've got to be consistent to get results. A good trainer needs to be not just like, they can't just be physically fit themselves. They need to be a good coach to coach other people how to be fit. They don't necessarily have to be the most super fit person in the world, but they need to be able to teach people how to do it and make people feel good when they're doing it. I think a lot of clients, especially the kind of clients we help, are looking for a really relatable trainer. They're not looking for a robot who tells them it's got to be 110% every day and you know only the best every single day will do because the reality for most people is getting it right 80 percent of the time is still going to happen get great results yeah. so I'd, I'd want a trainer that would that walk the walk but in a realistic and relatable way you might have the knowledge and the skill set to get someone to where they need to be but they might seem to think they might feel it might be a bit hypocritical if you're telling someone to do one thing and you're not doing it yourself, your own health. Um, but obviously, no one's perfect. You got you're like no one's perfect. Like even a personal trainer isn't perfect. So like um, being relatable, I think is the key. I think as a trainer, it would be very difficult to be giving out healthy like nutritional and fitness advice if you weren't doing it yourself. Because I think you would feel hypocritical as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Would then not make your sessions particularly rewarding. I guess what we're saying is that literally everybody will benefit from living this way. Whereas the athlete is like, this is a very specific goal. Actually, you know, you, you don't need to be at that level to be healthier and to, you know, enjoy your life more. That's just a specific goal that they've got because it's their context. Whereas everyone else will benefit from being a little bit fitter and healthier. And so if we don't live that out, we're kind of, that's where the hypocrisy comes in, I suppose, isn't it? It's not just about the exercise. It, it's it's everything else that underpins it. It's the sleep, the nutrition, the habits, you know, what your job is, how it impacts your life, how it impacts your exercise and your diet. Um, I, I don't think you can be a good personal trainer if you're not interested in really getting into the details mm. and helping clients with everything else. Yes. Sort of goes back to the accountability, but having someone there uh, might motivate, I find motivates people a lot more than if they're on their own. Um, so yeah, motivation is a big one they can get out of it. I think that's where our, our system of using the healthy habits really has value. You know, by identifying the handful of things that each person can start doing right from the start of their program to support uh, you know, the simplest, the five simplest things that are going to have the biggest benefit to support and get the most uh, benefit from the additional exercise that they're bringing into their life. I feel like clients should leave a workout feeling more energised rather than feeling depleted after a workout. Um, so it's, I guess it's having the ability to know what the right dosage of exercise for the client is and then increasing that as they start to start to progress themselves making that hour 100 percent yours you know they should be completely solely focused on you in that in that hour that might be the only hour that you get that is yours that week or what are those two hours a week so it, they should be completely focused on you um making sure that you're yeah they're, they're holding you accountable to your goals giving you a good workout and yeah making you feel good uh, i guess something we haven't touched on so far is you, you were saying about the character traits of good pts i think flexibility I would say that you know, fifty percent of sessions need some kind of in-the-moment adaptation. Perhaps if somebody might have picked up a small injury or just not be feeling great one day, or, or yeah, you, you've got to be able to think on your feet and and still do something that's effective for them. But how important is personality versus expertise when it comes to finding the right trainer? I know we sort of touched on this earlier. Actually, you can look at expertise in different ways, can't you? You could think about expertise being about health and fitness, um, just you know, knowing loads about muscle groups and how to like hypertrophy or weight loss specifically or nutrition, but actually your expertise could be more on behaviour change, um, which is kind of you know, being able to be personal and getting to know the client. So that could be the expertise rather than the health and fitness side of things. And one of the things that I think really elevates uh everyone who works for at home fitness you know distinguishes us from away from that stereotype is is i've yet to meet any of our trainers who didn't have 
um, you know, great life experience. Like they, they've been and done other things. They they live in the real world. They they you know have have other priorities themselves other than just their exercise.